For anyone who has owned a Samsung smartphone with Exynos, most of us would have had really bad experiences and I myself had bad experiences twice. And when Samsung announced that the Samsung Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus will be getting the Exynos 2400, I was like... <sighs> but then I was on the hunt to find actual benchmark performance videos is, and it was kind of hard to find until like two, three days back. Now I have compiled data from all these videos and to be honest, I am surprised by how good the Samsung Exynos 2400 performs. So is it better than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 or is it even close? Let's find out. Now before starting, I just want to thank all these YouTubers here because I've taken data from all of them. They have in-depth, you know, performance uh, reviews and videos of the Exynos 2400 and they do have amazing other content. So make sure you check them out. And another disclaimer, all these tests have been run on devices which have pre-release software. So the, this is not the software that is going to ship to the customers. That is going to be even more fine-tuned, even more better. And you will understand why this is pre-release in some time. With that said, let's just jump right into the performance. All the scores presented here are an average of all the scores taken from various videos. So this is an average of all of that. Now let's start with Antutu. Now in Antutu, when you take a look at Exynos performance, you get an average score of 1.6 million points, whereas the Snapdragon has 1.7 million points. Now you might have noticed why is Snapdragon scoring less? Because if you had taken a look at IQ12's performance, which has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, you would have noticed it scores more than 2 million. But why is this less? And that is because these were tested on pre-release software. So pre-release softwares will have bugs and all sort of stuff. That is the reason it's less, but this will change. But we are taking this as the benchmark. Anyways, moving on, when you take a look at the Antutu score, there is a 9.8% difference and that is not huge to be honest. Now let's take 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. Now the Exynos scores 4,306 points, whereas the Snapdragon scores 4,891. Now here there is a 12.7% difference, but again, not a huge difference like we actually assume. Now, pure synthetic benchmark wise the difference is not that much and when you actually compare this with the snapdragon 8 gen 2 it is actually on par with that sometimes even going to be better than that so this is a huge win but one thing that we have always faced is really hot temperatures on exynos powered smartphones so how does these perform so when taking a look at the temperature you know taken from 3d mark you can see that the exynos has an average value of around 46 degrees whereas snapdragon has 44 and this is the actual core temperature the inside and there's one youtuber who actually uses a thermal gun to check the outside temperature and the exynos gets hot around say 41 42 degrees and of course it is not cool but it is not overly warm, it is not uncomfortable. And to be honest, this is normal heating when you're playing games for a very long time. And to be honest, I personally think this is a huge upgrade in terms of temperature when you compare it with the previous Exynos versions. But one thing that I couldn't figure out from all these videos is whether these thermal throttle. So we might have to wait for that, but right now, temperature wise also, this looks good. But another thing that I notice with this is the stability. So in 3D Mark, you do get stability metrics. And when you take a look at Exynos, it performs better than Snapdragon. Now here you have an average score of 62.1% on Exynos. So the stability and Snapdragon scores 57. And Exynos is much stable, you know, when compared to Snapdragon and that is surprising. And it's not only uh, these videos that I went through, I actually went through few websites which actually, you know, benchmark uh, processors, not only smartphones, but laptops, everything like nano review and stuff. And even when I checked all those sites, the Exynos was close to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It wasn't faster than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, nor was it equal, but it was near. In certain aspects, of course, it was better, but when you take an overall picture, 
uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 was definitely ahead, but definitely not by a huge margin. And I think that is particularly great. I was actually surprised by the result that the Exynos gave because even though it was not faster than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, it was near to that and it was stable and the temperatures were reasonable. They were not too hot, not crazy hot. So that is something I liked about this Exynos 2400. But despite this, people are still going to hate Samsung for doing this. And why is that? And the main reason for that is consistency. You know, people, if they want to buy a smartphone and especially say a high-end smartphone, they would expect the manufacturer to provide the same thing that they give for everyone. Now, it is kind of stupid for, you know, uh, India and other parts of the uh, world to get Exynos, whereas only United States enjoy Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, not that the Exynos is bad, but if Samsung is giving the Exynos 2400, give that everyone. If you're giving Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, give that to everyone. Why is this separation? I, I kind of hate that. And there's an even better idea. Now, based on this pre-release software benchmarks, we can see that the Exynos 2400 is an amazing chipset. And it is actually going to be on par with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and sometimes even better than the 8 Gen 2. I would have preferred Samsung to ship the S24s with the 8 Gen 3 and, you know, sell the S24 FEs, which of course they will release with the Exynos 2400, which will make it a really good buy. I really don't know why they didn't do that. So in my opinion, even though the Exynos 2400 is good and I really appreciate Samsung working on that, people still, you know, expect consistency. And that is what is more important here. The Exynos 2400 is good, but when you're buying a super high-end smartphone, you want the absolute best. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. And this here is Suman signing off once again. Catch you later.